If you want to make renders like this, then this tutorial will help you to achieve the skills to model, create your own textures, and learn some tips and tricks to improve the quality of your render to make it look less CG. So the first thing we are going to make is a notebook. So I'm going to delete all of this, press Shift A, Mesh, Plane, scale it on the X axis, scale it on the Y axis, and now it kind of looks like paper. Maybe we can increase it just a little bit. Pressing on 7, we can now add some geometry to this in order to make the holes and boxes. So I got a notebook right over here and it's always good to use visual reference to know what you're doing. Control A, apply the scale. Add a whole bunch of loop cuts like this and then more loop cuts and they should be square. So if you have squares here, then it's good. If you have some rectangular type shapes which are more stretched out, it's not good. Subdivide. And now we have a whole bunch of squares. The first thing I'm going to make are these square holes. So I'm going to select by four, then skip two rows and do the same thing over and over again until we have everything selected. What you can also do is zoom in, press on C and then you get a circular box around your mouse and click like this. If you use middle mouse, it will remove it. So now you can work a lot faster and select this. So now we can have these holes and just delete them by pressing X and removing all these faces. And now we need to make the circular shapes. So right, going back into here, maybe taking this part. So there are nine of these each time. I'm going to skip two rows and select each nine. And this should be enough for all the holes. So if you don't have loop tools enabled, you can go to edit, preferences, add-ons, type loop tools, and it should come with Blender automatically. Just click on this box and you will have it enabled. And now you can right mouse click, loop tools, circle, and now we have a circle. But since we are working from the median point, if you now scale this, it all scales towards the center. So we're going to set it to individual origins because I think these holes are a bit too big. And I'm going to scale it like this. I'm going to delete it, press X, faces, and now it's gone. And I'm going to select every fourth by going into edge mode by pressing on two, holding alt, clicking over here and select every fourth. And I'm going to scale this on the X axis because you always have these ellipse shapes as well instead of only circular shapes. And what we can do now is go over here Add a solidify. In the modifier section, type solidify and let's see how thick this is. It's a bit too thick for my liking. So I'm going to decrease this to 0 0.003. And now I'm going to add an array modifier. It's on the X axis, we do not want that. So I'm going to press zero on the factor X and make it like one on the factor Z. Increase the amount. I'm going to set it to 15. And I will increase the Z axis just a little bit more by holding shift. And now you can see we actually have some separation in between these papers. It still doesn't look very randomized. It's very static and CG. So we're going to fix that right now. Go over here. Press Ctrl A on the array as well, and now everything will be applied. And we have geometry for everything. Select this one by clicking on it and then pressing L. R, Z, and we can rotate it ever so slightly to make it look a bit more randomized. Going to do the same for this one. Maybe rotate it the other way around. Now, as you can see, this already looks a whole lot better than what we had before. And we can now add the rings. I'm going over here, going to select every other edge by holding Alt, Shift S, cursor to select it. And now the cursor is exactly in the middle. Shift A. Curve, circle, and we now have a circle right over there. I'm going to scale it down a bit. R, Y, 90, G and Y to move it along this axis. And I think this looks pretty good, but we can always scale it down later on. So I'm heading over to the object data tab right over here, geometry, and under bevel, we can select the depth and make it a bit more circular like this. And now it actually has some geometry. Now I'm going to move it towards the side a little bit because there are two rings for each hole. So I'm going to press tab A to select everything, shift D, X and move it towards this side. I think the ring is a bit too big though. So I'm going to scale it down once again and move it towards this side until it kind of makes sense. And we can place it down as well to have the geometry origin point sit more in the middle of this instead of on the top. And now we can add an array to this. So modifiers, array. As you can see, the factor X has become the Z axis. So what we need to do is press Ctrl A, all transforms and now the X will be the X once again. So I'm just going to increase this value until it hits the next hole. And now we have a ring for each hole. Ah, this is already starting to look like a notebook, but there's still different things that we can do in order to make it better. And I think we missed a circle over here. So I'm going to press on seven and I will press on Alt Z so we can see through everything. Then I will select all these areas like this, those six. And if I now press on loop tools and circle, we get a whole bunch of circles, scale it down to make sure that it looks a bit more like the other one. Press X and delete the faces. And now we have the circle over there as well. But there is something that I would like to add to make it look even more real. What I'm going to do, heading over here, I'm going to select one of these in the middle, like this one. Press P, separate the selection. 
and now this one is separated from the rest of the notebook. So we can take this out and now we can randomize this a bit more in order to make it seem all jagged and roughed up like we've got over here. And the way I'm going to do it is by pressing tab, selecting this part, press O. So now we have proportional editing. I'm just going to randomize it a little bit and make sure that it looks a bit more roughed up. And maybe what we can do is select some of these edges and just drag it out like this. Make it look a bit more randomized. And we're adding all of this extra detail to make it look more real. And now we have some ragged edges on this piece of paper as well, which already makes it look a whole lot better if you ask me. So there's a couple of things that we can do. First, I'm going to add a texture. The way I made a texture is by writing on this notebook itself, taking a picture of it, and then I'm going to use that picture to project on here. And of course, if it's from real world footage, it's an actual photo, it will already look more photo real. Go to the shader editor, control T, open, select whatever you've written, go into this mode, and you can already see that we have a bit of our table on the paper as well. And go over into edit mode, A, U, project from view. Let's go over to the UV editor and we can click on this button so we can actually see what we're doing. Press A, scale it up, something like this. We do not want to include the holes. And now we already have some paper going on, but there are some things that we can improve with this texture as well. To randomize it, bring it a bit more to the top so that it's not aligning with the other text entirely. We can improve on this texture and afterwards we are going to sculpt on this to make it look even more real. Go to the shader editor, let's add a noise texture, drag this, bump height, bump in the normal, control T, set this to object, Increase the scale to like 200, maybe even more, like 300, like this. Decrease the strength of this. And now we have some paper texture going on, if you'd like to do that. You do not have to do this. It already looks pretty fine without the bump texture, if you ask me, but this just adds a little touch of realism as if it's actually paper. Let's go over here, increase the roughness just a little bit. And now this is a good looking piece of notebook, but we are not there yet. I'm heading over into sculpt mode. And now with the crease selected, we can simply draw in some creases in this. And I'm going to hold control to make it go outwards, something like this. You can smooth it over as well, just a little bit. And just make sure that there is some randomization in the paper. The smaller you make it, the crazier the crease you can do. Just maybe do something like this, something that feels more organic. So this is a destructive process. So keep in mind that you might want to have a backup of this before you actually start sculpting. Now, as you can see, we get some shading issues over here, which we can easily fix by going over here, selecting everything, press seven, U, project from view. And as you can see, it will be gone, but we have to do the UV shading once again. And now for the final thing, we also need to give a metallic shader to the rings. Heading over to the material tab, new, increase the metallic, Decrease the roughness just a little bit. So that's basically it for the notebook, our very first object. Of course, you can uh, maybe randomize this by uh, rotating it a bit and bring it like so. And now it already looks a little bit better. Things like that, you can play around with it to get the final result. So let's head on over to the next object, which is going to be a compass. So for the compass, what I basically did is make this entire texture, make some cylinders and have it be those circles. Pretty simple to do. Now, in order to have these rings around this, it's actually quite easy. We have our 3D cursor in the middle. So if you add, let's say a cube, I'm just going to show you how to do it so you know how it works and then you can figure it out for yourself. You can also get this one from my Patreon. I will upload it on Patreon and then you can use this texture. So press on seven, set this to 3D cursor, Shift D, R, Z, one degree, and do this 360 times. And then in this fashion, you have the entire circle surrounding this. So if you want to make a texture like this, that's totally possible, but I've already put it on my Patreon and you can get it over there. So now let's actually make the compass. I'm not going to overcomplicate this. I'm simply going to use a cylinder. I'm not using any reference. I'm just going to do it by what I think a compass looks like. Go over here. E and S, bring it upwards using G and Z without proportional editing, of course. Make sure that it has the shape of a compass. And then I will scale it inside a little bit, then press I and E and extrude this down until we're all the way at the bottom and maybe scale it like so. So that it actually fits into this entire structure. Let's select this part, go over to materials, plus assign this, give it a new material, control I plus and give it a new material and assign it as well. Then go over here, press on two, hold alt and select this edge, press F and now we have the glass for this as well. And now I'm going to duplicate this, shift D, Y, bring it over here, RX 45, let's say, bring it upwards. And we need to find a way to connect this. Taking this part, just these two or four of these faces, press S, Y, zero, and now it's straight. Bring it outwards by pressing E, then select these two parts, bring it upwards by pressing E, and maybe we can move it a bit to the side by G and Y. Let's select this, Let's add two loop cuts like this, select these two and remove it by removing the faces, then fill this up, 
by pressing F. And we've got an extra edge over here. We could clean up the topology if we would like to. We could just select this and that, press F, add an extra loop cut, select this edge, this edge, and this edge. And then do the same for this part as well. And now let's do the same for this part. Uh, now we need to add some circles in this shape. So I'm going to do that by pressing control, giving this three loop cuts and maybe do the same over here. One, two, three, like so. Let's do the same on this one. One, two, three, one, two, three. Then I will select those four, those four, those four, and those four loop tools, circle, Oh, and as you can see, that kind of messes it up. So what we can do is head over to the object mode, control A, apply the skill, loop tools, circle, and now everything will work fine. Delete the edges, select this entire circular edge, this one as well. Go to the search menu, type bridge, bridge edge loops, and now we have a bridged edge loop right over here. I'm going to do the same for this part over here as well. Bridge edge loops, and now it actually has some geometry over there. Very good. Let's say, uh, let's select this. Shift S, cursor to select it, and add a cylinder. Scale it down, R, Y, 90. Scale it down, S, X. And we need to find a way to connect this part with this part. Make a loop cut over here, bring it over there. Loop cut over here, bring it over there. Let's take this and take that one. Alt E, faces along normals, and have it go towards this side. And then set this to median point, S, X, and have it move towards the bottom, now bring it upwards, and now it is connected. It's not the most beautiful mesh, but uh, but it works for what we have to do. Now what we could also do is add some subdivision surface modifier, add some more geometry over here. The bottom side is a bit wacky. I'm going to select this, use I, and add some more geometry. And now it will be rounded out and more smooth, have some sharp edges. Same goes for this side, I, and uh, looks pretty okay. So let's go to the shader tab. And for this one, I will add an HDRI, so N, Easy HDRI. I'm going to add an HDRI from this folder. Create world nodes, and now we have an HDRI. So this one should be a separate material. Plus, assign new material. Going over here, type glass, and it will automatically make it a glass type material. Decrease the roughness. So now let's remove this face by pressing H, and it should be gone. And if we select the bottom side, right like this, press I, maybe we can make it a bit more smooth. Shader editor, Control T, open texture, right over here. See what it looks like. And it's all off center, no problem. You unwrap, go over to the UV editor. We've got a circle shape right over here. It's doing this funky thing. And the reason for it is that we need to select this edge, shift E, and then it will stretch it out. And now all we need is a metal texture and we're going to diversify the glass as well to make it look a bit more real. Go over to the shader editor, metallic, roughness, down a little bit. And I'm going to add a smooth by angle. Let's go over to the modifier, normals, smooth by angle. Ignore sharpness, shade smooth, and now this is shaded smooth. As you can see, if we turn this off, we have some weird shading artifacts, but now everything should be fixed. And the same goes for this one. Normals, smooth by angle, ignore the sharpness, shade smooth, and everything should work fine. Uh, now I noticed that this part could go inside as well. So let's select this, I, E, I, like this. So let's add a noise texture, add it to the roughness, add a color ramp, control shift click to see what it does. And it's kind of stretched out. Reason for it, we do not have any UVs for this. So let's have a texture coordinate node, pop up object into the vector. And now this will look a lot more normal. Select the white and bring it downwards until it is barely noticeable, but it does bring some variation into it. So maybe just a little bit more. And now you can see that the roughness is having its effect. Now it's a bit too reflective for my taste. So I'm going to take the black one as well and bring it upwards just a little bit in order to have that removed. So let's go to the glass material, add a mix shader, add a principal BSDF. Now we need to mix it using a noise texture, factor in the factor, control T on this object in the vector. And now we can mix these two textures. So a part of this is glass and a part of this is the uh, principal BSDF. I'm going to make this metallic as well, decrease the roughness and have it almost be the same as uh, the glass itself. Makes it look just a bit more real. We can increase the scale if we'd like or decrease it. And we can also change the IOR of this. I'm going to use 1.06 maybe. I will look later on in the render what looks good. And that's it for the compass. I'm going to select both of these. Bring them together, control J, and now we have a compass as well. And now for the final model today, we are going to make a table. So first I'm going to add a cube S, set, S, Y, and make it look something like this. And now we already have one plank for our table. So going over to the shader editor, press new, control shift T to add a texture, and I'm going to use wood 62. And now we can select this, U, cube projection. Let's go to the UV editor, 
scale this up are 90 because I want it to be stretched in this area. We need to add some randomization to this. So as set, bring it down just a little bit and maybe we can add a whole bunch of geometry like so. And now we have something to work with. Let's go to the sculpt tab, select Dyn Topo, set it to constant detail and maybe set it to 15. And now we are simply going to rough this mesh a bit up. We can also use the grab brush and drag out certain parts. So I'm going over back to the object mode, U, Q projection, and it's rotated the wrong way around, R90. And now it already looks pretty good, but we're not done yet. Let's go to the shader editor and I am going to switch out the normal map for a bump map. For some reason, I find this to work a bit better. So I'm going to add a bump, bump in the height, bump in the normal. You can see it does a lot for us, decrease the strength. And we can also add some displacement by going over to the material tab, settings, displacement and bump. And now it will be a bit too much, no problem. Decrease the scale to 0.1, keep decreasing it until it looks uh, kind of good. If it doesn't look good, add geometry. 0.02 on the displacement and 0.04 on the bump. And now we can add some randomization to the entire material. So let's move this to the side. View, saturation and value right over here. Mix color right over there. Plug this in. Let's take this and plug this into B. Use a noise texture to drive the difference. Let's make it a bit more greenish. Use the UV. So drag it into the noise texture. Increase the scale, increase the detail, increase the roughness a bit. And now we need to play around with this until we get something that we like. And now it looks like there's some moss on our wood as well. And now it's a little bit more dirty and real looking. If you want more information on high quality lighting using gobos, check out the link in the description. I recently made the ultimate gobo pack. And click here to watch part two on creating this scene.